How are we doing there, boys and girls? Mathis here. Welcome back to another video. Um, so this is Foundry. This is a little game that I've spent way too much time on in the last few days. We've been streaming this mostly, uh, and I decided it would be wise, before we get back into some World of Warcraft stuff for my regular viewers, to take a little base tour. I kind of feel as if I have... Uh, come to the semi-natural conclusion with this game and I'm pretty content with where I got with it. For those who are, you know, new to this genre, uh, I'm a big fan of games such as Factorio, Satisfactory, this sort of factory simulation system where by design you have to go find resources and you have to make things and the more things you make you develop more technology and that makes you make things faster and then when you make things faster you can mine faster and the cycle continues until you end up with a sprawling base like this that's producing loads of stuff doing lots of little cool things um, and it's really quite enjoyable it scratches an itch for me that World of Warcraft doesn't most of you will know that World of Warcraft is my main game, but for anybody new around here, I do like to play a variety of different games. So, I thought I'd give you a bit of a base tour. If you have been playing Foundry, uh, you might hopefully be able to spot a few things you can implement into your factory. If not, either way, I hope this will be interesting as a, a little bit of an overview to this style of game. Now, of course, this is not sponsored. I know uh, this channel is 99% World of Warcraft, so it might feel a little bit odd for me showcasing something else. But uh, I love this genre of game, so I picked it up either way. So, let's, I guess we should probably start from the beginning. Um, you start off by mining. Uh, you get little robot drones. In fact, I can probably show you down here. I've got a little underground mine on the go here. Um, you do some mining. Apologies to anybody with vertigo. Uh, you do a little bit underground mining. You pick up some resources out the floor. Um, this node is actually almost completely depleted. Maybe I need to fix this. Uh, some of it's even exploded. I wonder what's going on here. Uh, <laughs> okay, I should have checked this out first. Um, but you do some mining. You can see these little robots. They run off. They pick up some ore. Uh, and you are then in control of what you do with that ore from this point on. I'm uh, sending it up through a big conveyor belt, and then it's probably heading into a smelting area. This is how you start the game. Obviously, you may be not necessarily starting it to this degree. You start with a small little patch on the floor, and you work from there. Um, but you start with a few little, uh, little, little smelting area. You pump it through some smelters, and you get some... Uh, some uh, xenoferrite plates, I believe these are called. I've been calling them ferret plates for the entire playthrough. Uh, you do the same with not just the orange ore, but there's also a blue ore. Tech technium ore, I think it's called. Uh, once again, I've been renaming it techno ore, because it then makes uh, techno bars. Like This little mining section's actually run out, but uh, you make these techno bars. These are your two main primary components, and then that zoom zooms off into your factory. I've obviously expanded quite dramatically now. I've actually, There's five different sciences you have to produce and they steadily get more difficult as you produce them and it's those science that gives you research points to learn new things and you slowly but steadily chip away and you, you work your way through this spectry. Um, quite an involved little spectry for a game that's actually in early access still. This is not a fully released game, it's on Steam, it's only in early access but it's quite well polished to be honest for an early access game. Uh, there is definitely a few gaping holes in the gameplay still, which I'm uh, I'm led to believe they're working on. But the uh, the general consensus from me has been that working through this is quite smooth. It's quite fun. There's some interesting things. So let's give you guys a little bit of a walk through then. So you first off have to start with your basic two components and your first job is to make the very first science. The very first science you try and make is blue science. And this is super easy. All it needs is some of those techno rods, which comes from one of the basic ores after you've smelted it, and some machinery parts. And you throw that in this assembly machine, and it spits out Science Pack 1. Uh, I assume they're going to give these slightly more descriptive names. Science Pack 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is a touch boring. Um, but welcome to the nature of early access. Um, these get spat out. You use these, what are referred to as loaders. 
Anybody that's uh, familiar with the factory sim genre will know that games like Factorio, for example, have inserters. But fact, uh, these loaders work slightly differently. They just pump materials out. Uh, and so it makes the early game and it makes a lot of this game actually a little bit more beginner friendly. I would highly recommend, I know a few people I've persuaded to play Factorio over the years. I'd highly recommend this as your first step into a game of this genre. As the, there are a few things that make the early game easier. The loaders, it means you just have the simple scenario of, right, take stuff off a belt, put it in a machine, and then it spits it out onto another belt. You're not worrying about, well, how fast do these inserters work and this sort of stuff. Like, it just happens. The other thing that's really cool is the power system. You'll see uh, it looks a little bit like a concrete jungle, to be fair, but these, uh, the, all the floor, foundation floor, actually transfers power through it as well. Your energy is transferred from your... Uh, I have a little steam system on the go over here. If we fly over, I have a steam power setup. Factorio fans will recognize something like this. Uh, I have a little bit of a steam setup. All of this power is generated uh, through steam, through burning some resources, and it then uh, is transferred both via power poles, but also via the floor, via the foundation, which uh, once again is one less thing for you to have to think about when you first start playing the game. Uh, more often than not, where you place your power poles is important and it starts to look a little bit spaghettified and can be a bit difficult to uh, lay things out, keep things neat, keep things tidy, keep things organized. Uh, they've done away with that with this smart system of allowing the low voltage electricity at least to flow through the floor. There is a step up, you will notice there are some power poles and stuff kicking about. You do uh, eventually unlock high voltage power which does then need to be transferred via wires and in turn then can be converted down to low voltage power and which will be shared through the floor. So it's quite a clever little twist on the power system. We like that, we like that a lot. Um, I made a little shopping center. Some people call these malls, some people call these uh, sort of shopping centers, whatever you want to call it. This is a little area or make all section potentially. This is where I bring some of the early components in that are common on a lot of different things. You can see every single factory here crafting something uses one of these three initial early game components. Um, and so you can daisy chain all of these together and you can quite quickly make a lot of stuff. And putting it in a, putting it in a chest, putting it in a storage locker means it's so much easier to just fly past, pick, pick it up whenever you need it. Um, the little symbols on the screens were a touch small, so I was quite for, I was quite lucky to find how to get the little screens, and you can just go in on these screens and customize the text on them, and they can show whatever you want. It just means I can fly past, and you may notice I'm flying. You can fly past and very quickly see where you need to get stuff. So this was kind of quite, uh, quite useful. Let's talk about getting places. At the beginning of the game, you're on foot. This is sort of uh, this is your view for the first five ten hours of the game for most people I'd suspect maybe a touch longer even um, you're on foot unlocking the jetpack oh my word unlocking the jetpack is a massive quality of life it allows you to sort of float through the air you may see my jetpack is using fuel fuel you unlock. I would say sort of mid-game, honestly. Uh, your third science, I think, is when you start unlocking fuel. And that segues me nicely onto fuel, I suppose. I've got a little fuel section on the go over here. I apologize, it's going to start getting a bit dark now. Um, I haven't put many lights out, but hopefully it'll still look relatively clear on the YouTubes. This is the little oil factory. You, uh, you mine up some ore out the floor with these pump jacks. I've chosen to dump it all into a storage tank just so I can quickly, easily come along and go, oh, how much have I got? Oh, I've got none. Um, <laughs> I think my factory's got some problems at the moment. I think I've run out of power. Uh, perfect time to record a video, clearly. Um, I then have a few uh, sort of oil refinery plants making a few different indiv in individual components. We're making some polymer which then goes into polymer boards, which is a key component for some of your sort of like circuit boards later in the game. 
Uh, we are making some acid. A lot of people would probably consider this sort of like your sulfuric acid used in components later on in the game as well. And importantly, you can also turn some of that oil into fuel. And once you've turned it into fuel, that's where you get some fuel for your jetpack. You can also produce some fuel, which I clearly need to produce more of, uh, to run your steam engines. Uh, whilst my factory seems to be suffering a brownout right now, it's not the end of the world because I've also installed some solar, but apparently I have not installed enough solar, nor have I installed enough batteries just yet for it to, uh, for it to run 24-7 by itself. Let me take a quick little look at our power system and see what the problem is. Um, oh, no, we seem to be doing okay. It just seems to be that some stuff is off right now. Not entirely sure exactly why that the case is. My batteries are being depleted. Maybe uh, not all of my factory has access to this battery power, clearly. Um, I'm still learning some stuff about the game. I do not know 100% everything about the game yet, even though I think this first playthrough is almost complete. I think I've almost got everything I need from here. Um, there are, let's talk about some of the gaping holes in the gameplay. Uh, any of you that have played sort of Factorio prior will uh, know that rushing robots is a common common practice. It's nice to have little robots flying around, delivering stuff to you, bringing you building materials, and in turn even crafting things for you. This isn't feasible right now, and it does mean that actually keeping track of your inventory and going and getting things is weirdly a big part of this game. Uh, so much so that I was super glad that I put together this little shopping center early days. Now, I was kind of lazy. There's a, common, uh, there's a common theory with these games to automate everything. And I automated most stuff and then I got bored automating stuff and wanted to make some more science things and kind of never went back and finished this. So I spent a lot of the game, uh, like the main buildings, actually handcrafting them. But you can handcraft pretty much anything you want and it's quite quick to make it and it turns up in your inventory relatively quickly. And as long as you have a good supply of materials in some storage boxes, it's usually not too much of a concern to handcraft things. Um, Later on in the game, you do you might have spotted these these ships flying about. You do actually end up in space. You might see the space station up there. We're technically this is technically a moon, um, but you get to rebuild this space station and you uh, you communicate with this space station and you spend you you send resources to the space station, and the space station then goes out and sells them and in turn gives you these Fermalite bars. And you can see my production of Fermalite bars over the last few hours, I guess this probably is. Uh, these Fermalite bars then become a resource that you need in the latter sciences. This is sort of the end of the zone for me. The end of my bus. I should probably talk about all these belts running through the middle of my factory. This is just a common way to sort of keep things organized, often referred to as a bus or a main bus, where you produce something and then you put it back on a belt and the belt runs through the middle of your factory so that at any point you can quickly grab some of those stuff. You put like a splitter in the belt, for example, take off some materials and hey presto, you're good to go. Um, and then whatever you make in that factory, you can choose whether that's a thing that's going to be needed later on and you can put that back on the bus. Um, the bus got a little bit spaghetti-fied. Obviously, without knowing the full extent of the game before going into this, going into this blind, I was somewhat guessing what might need to go on the bus and what might not need to go on the bus. I think I guessed right most of the time. The one thing that surprised me is that these techno rods, one of the very first things you craft in the game, which I assumed would be a key component uh, and an absolute must to have on the bus. Um, realistically, you don't need this almost ever for anything. This is one of the one of the one of the exceptions to something that doesn't really need to go on the bus. It goes into your very. Uh, in fact, it goes into the second science. And it goes into these like mini electronic components on mass. You're a good, a good high percentage of these early techno rods are going to go into producing these, and then they don't really need to go much further. Um, but you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. If I was to play through this again, I'd be able to make this a little bit neater, a little bit tidier, a little bit more organised. 
The coolest things in this game, though, come right towards the end. Uh, this is where I think uh, the, the, the gameplay design might need to be tweaked a little bit. They kind of keep your attention busy in the mid-game by building this huge, great big rocket and talking to space. But it tends to be more of a speed bump. I noticed that as soon as I built this rocket and tried to send stuff into space to get these Fermilite bars, my factory almost died. Um, died by... The fact that this is actually a hole to where my early game resources were. My resources ran out. And the game currently is pretty brutal when your resources run out. For starters, there's no way to track how many resources you've still got left. Um, which can cause you some problems. Because if it runs out and it runs out abruptly without you paying attention to it, you are kind of stuck. You're going to have to hope that you've still got enough resources to uh, run out somewhere, find another ore patch, and get some uh, get some materials from out further afield. You can see you have to go quite some distance to get some resources outside of your main base. Uh, late game, you do get cargo ships, but I say this is late game. I don't think this is until the 4th, if not... Yeah, it's the fourth science you unlock this technology for these cargo ships. Uh, these are four different drop locations for my cargo ships. Uh, I've designated each one for a different type of resource. So I've got resource nodes out on the map that has gone and done some mining, done some digging, and it brings it back to these locations. And once again, my OCD kicks in, makes these look all neat and tidy. And they get put into a little uh, array of materials that my smelting systems can use. This is sort of mid to late game smelting. Uh, there is actually a new technology that I've just unlocked that I haven't played with yet called Blast Furnace. And a Blast Furnace is a big way to produce an awful lot of stuff with a little bit more complexity for those that want that sort of thing. But it is by no means, uh, no means necessary at the moment. Um, I've scaled this up pretty big for the factory uh, as it runs right now. I'm producing reasonably close to about 10 science per minute, I think, across the board. Although I've not left my factory running since I've implemented uh, this big monstrosity at the end. This makes little robots. I should probably showcase this. It might be a bit hard to see because unfortunately it's still the middle of the night. I timed this video really poorly. Um, but you make little robots, right? So you, you, you make a torso and then it attaches a head to it. You can see it's attached the heads to some of these. Um, later on down the line you attach arms and you attach legs to it and then you weld it all together and then you put it in this warehouse and it gets sent off to space and you sell the robots. It's quite cool. That also makes you some of those, uh, some of that currency which you need for some of the earlier science as well. So there's some really cool little aspects to this game. Uh, a nice twist on the regular sort of factory building sim. Um, a lot of people throughout the week on playing this on stream have compared it to Satisfactory, have compared it to Factorio. I myself many times, probably 15 times in just this video. But it's um, it's a good little game so far. It's pretty beginner friendly. There's definitely some things it could do with. Uh, blueprints, I have to go, I have to get it on record as saying that the fact that there's no way to copy or paste anything or blueprints in any shape or form is really the thing that will stop me trying to build some massive mega factory. I can't stomach scaling up to like three or four times this size without the ability to copy paste things. If you put the time and the effort to like try and build a nice neat and tidy balanced and ratioed build, um, when you want to make that again to have to, you know, because you may make this one day and then come back two days later and decide that, well, now it's time to double this. You might not remember exactly how you did it. And so there is a lot of luxury to be said in just being able to like scr scrub across, copy paste something, put it in a blueprint, slap it down somewhere else. Obviously, Factorio has blueprints in a fashion to where, you know, you then have to still have to go and build it. It only pastes down a ghost and you still need to pay for it all and have resources. And there's, there is a downside to using blueprints. Um, often, if you actually were to just build it yourself, you can. But at least it would paste a ghost or a plan uh, on the ground on exactly what you need. 
But boys and girls, I won't uh, go on too long with this video. This was just a bit of an overview to this game. Uh, what you could expect from it if you pick it up and play it yourself. Uh, like I said, final thoughts. About 60 hours or so went into production of this. Of course, this was while I was streaming. So uh, when I'm streaming, I am most definitely not 100% optimal. I'm spending time talking with chat. We're looking at other things, doing other things. Um, but I had a blast. We'll be back in World of Warcraft soon. But if you want to see more from this, if you want to see uh, a little bit more detail on some builds, maybe some of the uh, like more a more step by step progress through the factory, I'd be happy to put some more content together. I've enjoyed the game and I would quite happily enjoy making some more content for it if you guys would enjoy it as well. But that's me done for today, boys and girls. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hit that like button. And of course, if you're new around here, consider subscribing. I've been Mantheus. I'll see you all next time. Peace.